If you would like to discuss living with thyroid eye disease and your hopes and fears about the treatment you will undergo or the emotional impact it has on you, your family and work, Moorfields has a dedicated team of eye clinic liaison officers and nurse counsellors who you can arrange to see through your clinic. The role mainly involves giving patients uh, time to talk, time to uh, discuss any of the distress and the anxiety that um, form part of the um, difficulty with the diagnosis. So time out, time to reflect and to address some of the issues psychologically. So to talk about the anxieties, to talk about the disfigurements, to talk about uh, the depression if they feel that. Um, the role also involves giving some information and advice about how to cope with the disfigurement, and how to uh, maintain a well-being um, as they go through this. Um, so I'm a bit of a listening ear, but more of a uh, support as they go through this difficult time. And it is very difficult. Nurse counsellors are always available to discuss these issues with you. I first started feeling funny in that in January 2010. That is when I noticed I was losing a lot of weight, I was feeling, had palpitations, didn't feel right, couldn't work out what it was. I went to the doctor and he more or less knew straight away that my eyes were just, just popping. They were really uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Yeah. When you said we're popping, what did that well, look they like? they popped out. I, I looked like one of the, like a goldfish, you know. Mm. <laughs> one of the things I wanted to ask you was really if you could tell me a little bit about the effect that the thyroid eye disease has had on your lifestyle. My lifestyle? Um, yeah. I don't think it's affected my lifestyle too much. It's more affected um, the way I see myself more. I mean, I'm still able to do everything that I, I've done before. Yes. I'm a mum. So um, oh, nothing's really, it, it, I wouldn't say it's prevented me from doing anything, mm -hmm. but I think it's prevented me, might probably knocked my confidence, um, sort of when it came to taking photographs, I'd always stand on one side, yes. and um, or just stay away from people taking photographs. Okay. Um, I have had people make comments who I didn't know, um, or when I've been on a night, you know, for a night out, yes. and somebody said, oh my God, what's wrong with your eye? Okay. <laughs> and um, my daughter's friends have sometimes said to her, what's wrong with your mummy's eye. Okay. Um, so things like that build yeah. up yes. and uh, start to make yeah. you uh, conscious of it. Yeah. It didn't worry me, I wasn't worried about that. Um, people take me as I am and if they don't like it, it's tough. Mm. No, it didn't, it didn't worry me about how I looked because mm. I wasn't really going out that much anyway. Mm. Um, it was the vision was hard mm -hmm. because I had to rely on other people, mm. and if I went out, I had to hold their arm a bit mm. because I couldn't. Mm. I could see, but not see. It you just couldn't focus. I couldn't focus mm. at mm. all. Mm. That was the worst thing. And how did that feel? Not being able to focus and being able to uh, be independent and go out. I hated that. it. I'm a very independent person, mm. and I hated not being able to do the things I've always done, not to be able to get out and go in my car and nip out if I wanted to and having to rely on other people. When it came to having the operation, my friends all said, well, don't have it, when I was telling them about oh, what really? it looked like okay. when I'd watched the operation. Yeah. Um, because we, you know, we can't see anything wrong with you. Yeah. And um, my husband has say, said the same thing. Okay. He said, don't have it, I'd rather you didn't. Right. Okay. But then when I weighed the pros and cons, I thought yeah. I'm just going to do it because I'm not feeling confident yes. and I yeah. want to have, um, mm -hmm. I want to see if it works, you know, yes. just to... Okay, so you decided to go ahead with yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. I suppose also there's a stigma with people saying, oh, it's just cosmetic. Um, and that was also a thing, you know, you're doing it for vanity because it was time off work, so is it just a, a vanity thing? Right. Um, but what I had to then tell myself was it wasn't because it was a caused by a disease. Yes. And so I was just writing mm -hmm. what the disease had done. Yes. So they decided that they would have to operate in the November. Mm -hmm. I always remember it was November the 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, 
they decided because they were really bad, they, they had to do it. Normally they'd wait, mm. but they had to do it. So I had my operation in November. When I first woke up, um, obviously I was still bandaged and I went all night and then a doctor came and saw me in the morning and he took the bandages off. Do you know what, yeah, I mean obviously it was painful, but I, I, more discomfort. Um, and he said, do you want to have a look? I said, yeah, of course I do. <laughs> so he, he had a look in the, cause she got me a mirror and looked and I, I remember looking at it and thinking, Oh yeah, that's all right, it's not too bad. I mean, you've got to understand if you're having an operation on your eyes and you're having stuff taken, you, you know that it's going to affect it. You yes. know, that you're going to be bruised and puffy. Yes. I mean, I've still got a numb nose. Mm -hmm. I've still numb here. Mm -hmm. This is still quite numb around here. I mean, it's, it, it might never go. <laughs> I'm st I'm numb here from when I had the thyroid out, so you know, yeah. that's just one of those things. Yeah. But yeah, it it took a long, long time for it to go down. Yeah. A long time. I also wanted to ask you if you found that um, Moorfields, uh, you know, here the eye hospital, if Moorfields have been supportive. Yes, I would say okay. they have been um, all through. The process of when I first came answering my questions, I came with a list of questions. Okay. And um, who they was were, answering those? Um, the Mr. Rose answered yes. a few, and some of the nurses when okay. we were looking at my eyes. The greatest fear that patients have, it seems, is the fear that it, the facial disfigurement will be permanent, that they will not look normal, or that the eye condition will be with them for a very long time and that they won't be able to cope um, with looking different. Um, so that's some of, one of the, the major fear. Um, the other is the fear that emotionally that they will be kind of stuck in feeling low and feeling depressed or isolated and feeling that they cannot move on. Um, and then the sadness comes with that, of the loss of a lifestyle or the loss of well-being. And those kind of issues we can talk about and, and explore in the counselling room. And, and then look at ways of managing that and coming out the other end. And I think in a way it's a bit similar to grieving, when you go through bereavement and, and the loss of, of, a, of a person in your life. I think that's how some patients with thyroid disease believe they've lost something, um, something significant, which is the way they used to look or the way their eyes used to be. Uh, and that is a huge issue where doctors, nurses need to be very sensitive about helping the patient um, move on, move forward, and by looking at the grieving um, that the patient is going through. And that's important for patients to know as well that they will grieve, um, but there is an answer. There is all a way forward to incorporate a new look, a new way of being into your life and, and well-being. Patients can come and see me uh, on a weekly basis. They have six sessions or 12 sessions, up to 12 sessions. And out of that, uh, we make an assessment about where the patient um, issues are, difficulties are. And then we look at trying to help them to um, make adjustments. Um, either to lifestyle or to the emotional um, well-being and then at the end of that if, if pe perhaps the patient needs more time or uh, there are issues or underlying issues where it's difficult and would need ongoing counselling then yes then patients that get referred onwards um, either through their GP or if they prefer through other psychological services that's available locally. What other services are available to patients? Well, there is, of course, the Thyroid Eye Disease Association, which are excellent for supporting patients as they go through. And then there is um, Changing Faces, who are also immensely useful for patients. They're a national body, and they support patients who have been born with um, disfigurements, or adults who have had trauma, 
and they provide free advice and information plus counselling as well. Patients feel sometimes they're alone in dealing with this issue, but um, when they have someone to talk to, they feel less alone, hopefully.